Speedway 660. In Geary, New Brunswick is home to the fourth round of the 2016 Harkan M Series season. And British veteran Carlin Dumian grab the pole in the one car. The 001 of John King starts on his outside. King got a pretty good start there considering he's on the outside. Uh, and Dumian, of course, has the shorter way around. This one third of a mile oval is placed a lot like Oxford Plains, except I'd say less forgiving. With dirt on the inside and grass on the outside, if you get into trouble here, you're uh, you're going for a ride. Uh, Carl and Dumian and John King still side by side for that first position. Good battling early on here. That's Mike Viznovsky, nearly pushed out three wide with Harris and Stringer. Some pretty good. Um, battling at the start of this race, Viznovsky is going to hold on to third for the time being, it does appear. Up front, it's still uh, Endumian and King running side by side. These two are actually pulling away from Viznovsky in third. Very impressive considering um, their lap times are probably slower than they'd be if they were running so uh, single file, of course. Carlin Dumian looking to slide up in front of the 001. King refuses. Uh, to give in. He looks like he's gonna have to though as Endumian's got a full car length on him coming into turn one this time. King slides it out wide and slides into second. Most of the field behind the leaders is still double file as we hit lap 10. Uh, we got Luko Brovac running alongside uh, B, uh, Benoit Laver Irvine in the 15. The French driver looking to make a name for herself in uh, this this Canadian stock car racing series. Uh, doing a pretty good job of it actually, uh, holding off uh, the 2014 Hart Pro Series champion Luca Obrovac. Taking a look at Matt Duncan who's currently running in fifth or sixth position and takes a bit of an unconventional line there through turn number three after washing up the track a little bit. Spencer Fullerton though not able to uh, uh, make a charge at him through there. He's just really, really good on corner exit. Interesting lines being run this early in the in the race. I'd expect them to wait uh, until they're, uh, until the asphalt gets some heat in it to really start messing around with uh, different lines, but hey, gotta give it to Matt Duncan for uh, trying things out early. Spencer Fullerton is currently sitting in seventh. He's uh, he wasn't uh, initially uh, that much of a short track racer, but he won two out, out of the three dirt track races of the 2015 season, and so I guess it's not so much of a surprise that he's doing so well at the moment. That's Gerald Reddington, I think, off the racetrack in the 99. He's got it back on now, but there must have been an incident. Matt gets to the inside of Wheeler Alba Wanderley, really all over the back of the number five around goes. The 5 and the 16, and a big stack up ensues. A few drivers get a small piece of that. Everyone generally okay, though. Uh, not too much damage sustained. Uh, Carl and Dumian, though, had to really check up for this incident. He was already half a lap in front of the tail end of the field, and with lap times being so short, that incident was bound to cause some issues. But Mike Wisnowski has taken advantage of this. He's into the race lead. I didn't even see him get by John King in the uh, 001, but he was in second, and now he's firmly into the lead with Skyla Johnson, the lap car, between him and second place. The battle for second place, really, between King and Endumian at this point. Uh, really impressive pass by the 41, if a bit aggressive uh, for such an early point in the race. Gerald Reddington already one lap down. As I already said, he got uh, put in the uh, grass at the tail end of the uh, big stack up incident. He's currently sitting in 41st, battling for that, uh, the all important position of that uh, dead, second to dead last there with Lucas Knight in the 88, who shoved him way up to the outside, completely off the racing surface, pretty much even on uh, the front straightaway. Uh, he's going to have a hard time getting into a place where he can hold on to his points lead. Uh, this place is quite hard to uh, run some fast laps at. You're constantly uh, adjusting your driving to those around you, and there's no way to get into clean air. Wisnowski doing a fairly good job at negotiating lap traffic here. 
Uh, he's got three cars, actually, between himself and second place John King. Harlan Dumian and John King have continuously been side by side or near each other for the last few laps, still going for that position. Currently sitting uh, behind Skylar Johnson and Alba Wanderley looking to lap those two cars. Wisnowski struggling actually here a little bit to lap Z um, Zayden Davidson in the 9 machine. Not a whole lot of difference really between uh, the speeds of the, uh, the top cars and the speeds of those at the very bottom. Allie Nelson just got past Matthew Stringer for fourth place. She's on a bit of a charge at this point. Now going after John King for third. Carlin Dumian just grabbed second back. Mike Wisnowski is stuck in really heavy lab traffic right in front of him. And as a result, even though these guys have been side by side, they have been catching Wisnowski the last few laps. Nelson hasn't had a, a whole lot of luck throughout her career. 2015 was very, very mediocre. Uh, and I'm sure she was looking for a better run at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, was running up in the top five before she got turned around uh, rudely. Uh, she's currently in second place, so got both of them. Uh, John King and Carlin Dumian on the low side, now just trying to make sure she uh, gets a, the Carlin in front of uh, the one of Carlin Dumian and now going after some of the lap traffic. Currently on board, Bill Littlejohn, who I'm sure is right in his element here on this tight short track in New Brunswick. Uh, he's currently sitting in around 16th place on the outside of Lucas Knight. Never a dull moment for any of these drivers. This place is just so tight that you're either battling with, uh, with uh, your competitors or trying to drive through lap traffic as efficiently as you can. Ali Nelson has gapped John King and Carlin Dumian by quite a fair margin, actually, nearly a second, and is now going after Wisnowski for the lead. He's gotten, she's gotten to the inside of Wisnowski in turn number one. Wisnowski trying to hold on, but Nelson dives it in to three once again. Out of the corner, they're pretty much dead even at the line there. That's going to count as Wisnowski's lap led, but Nelson continues to charge towards uh, the uh, 29 of Skyla Johnson trying to perhaps use the lap car as a pick if uh, she can get there. No, she doesn't even need to do that. She slides right in front of the 41 and Nelson to the race lead. Lily Gordon going after Fitzwater out of turn number two. Fitzwater closes the door at the last possible second. A bit of contact, I think. Uh, between those two, Prudence Little John had the inside, but uh, could not get the run off of the corner that she needed to uh, stay alongside those two. Uh, back in the midfield here, it's very, very tight. It's been like this pretty much the entire race, side by side, uh, battling for position. They don't yet have to deal with lap traffic. I imagine that will change as the race goes on, as they encounter both the leaders overtaking them and perhaps start overtaking some of the race back markers. Taking a look at the field flyby from turn three, the pit entrance camera. Uh, that's Allie Nelson in 96, rounding turn number two, side by side with Johnny Appleseed trying to put him a lap down. Completely engulfed in lap traffic is Allie Nelson at the moment, but she's still holding on to around a three quarters of a second advantage over Mike Wisnowski, who continues in second. This place really gives you no chance to relax no matter where you are on the racetrack. You can't just fall into a rhythm here, you've just got to keep digging. The struggle is real. Back around 33rd position, it's Martinez, Nut, and Appleseed struggling to uh, stay on the lead lap. Skyla Johnson trying to get a lap back from Ali Nelson as uh, they continue side by side. Viznoski has caught up a little bit. Both of the top two currently sitting on the outside. This could be a pretty good uh, situation for John King as he uh, might be able to get to the inside of these guys. Oh, that's a car off the racetrack there. Uh, I couldn't tell who that was. I think it was Zavid, uh, Zayden Davidson. We're going to have to take another look at, uh, at that one. Zayden Davidson running around the 30th place. Just locks up the brakes heading into turn number one. Very odd there. I guess it was just a little bit of uh, rookie inexperience 
for Davidson that uh, that caused that one. She'll continue. Uh, sorry, he'll continue on the racing surface. Okay, so I guess it wasn't like a mechanical failure. Just just locked up the brakes. I guess really odd one. There haven't seen a crash like that in quite a while. For the time being, uh, Mike Viznovsky and Allie Nelson have got themselves generally single file. Not so much though for the other members of the top five. John King and Carlin Dumian just got through some very, very heavy lap traffic. Matthew Stringer currently trying to do the same in the 87 machine. Uh, that would be Zayden da Davidson uh, now a lot down. Matt Duncan continuing to run the interesting line of the outside. Sometimes he's, he's making that work somewhat well, I guess, and I guess that could make it easier to pass lap cars under certain instances, so good for him. Uh, Spencer Fullerton sitting in, I think that's seventh. Uh, Harris continues in eighth. That's Daniel Voiles in the 52 up into the ninth position, I do believe. I don't think he's a lap down, unless I'm mistaken. It's really hard to keep track of who's where on this one-third of a mile circuit. Prudence Littlejohn has really faltered in the second third of this event. She was battling with her father at one point up around the top 15. Now sits 27th, actually. Uh, just got overtaken by the 10 of Gavin Moore and Allie Nelson just a few seconds behind. Um, perhaps we'll be lapping the uh, 31 before this race is done. Um, just in front of those two is Michael Kane in the 75. He just narrowly avoided the uh, lap 15 stack up incident uh, on the front straightaway. Uh, Mike Doan sits just uh, just in front of Kane, along with Bay Jenoff, who's lost a few positions recently. Uh, girl in the 01 sitting around in the midfield, as well as Krasta, and a nice battle between Wheeler, uh, that's Lily Gordon, and Nick Guerra in the 98, as they head through turn two uh, for around the 102nd time. Allie Nelson has opened up an advantage of nearly two seconds over everyone else. Oh, we got a smoker down in turn number one. That's Demir Bejinov in the 13. Really holding up uh, quite a bit of the field there. A lot of cars just went a lap down. As a result, as Ali Nelson flew by the outside line, and that will be the end of the race for Demir Bejinov. Real shame for him. He hasn't had engine problems in a very long time. Ali Nelson dealt with that well. Her advantage up to nearly three and a half seconds over Viznovsky at this point, even though she's still side by side battling with lab traffic. Appleseed refuses to give up that position, and Appleseed's actually been overtaking other cars to try and make sure he stays on the lead lap. Very impressive job by Appleseed, uh, though. At this pace, he could be the hard charger of the race just by staying alongside Ali Nelson. Matt Duncan and Ryder Smith running side by side. Duncan's fell a little bit back from where he was earlier in the race. Still sitting, I believe, 10th with the 7 running 11th. That's Lily Gordon and Alex. I thought Lily Gordon was outside the top 20. I don't even know what's happening with Lily Gordon this race. Maybe she's a lap down. I don't even know. Alex Tanker is in the top 15, though, I guess. Sydney Cross in the 21. Uh is making an overtake on the 91 as we speak. That's Brandon Krasta just behind. He's having a pretty uh, good run. Bill Littlejohn has been on his toes this race, still sitting inside the top 15, has, has gained some, has lost some, but I'm sure he's had a fun time of it no matter what. I think a car went off the road there uh, in turn number one a minute ago. I'll have to take a look uh, for that. There was a cloud of smoke there in turn one. Skyla Johnson is back on the lead lap in the number 29, trying to put a car between herself and Nelson. Runs it too hard into turn number one, makes some contact with Jim Mack and around. Uh, she goes, that's Luca Obrovac off the track. Both of the Blaze racing cars got caught up in that one somehow. I think Luca just outbraked himself in that corner, or maybe, uh, maybe did a little bit of target fixation there. Michael Kane, for once, an innocent victim of that, that's his second incident of the race. He now has damage to both the left and right side, right sides of his car. Maybe his car is rebalanced. Who knows? I don't know. 
I think Sydney Krasta has a problem with the 21 car. Yeah, she, he just drove, drove down all the way to the apron and got real sideways into that corner. Not sure whether he's trying to get to pit road or not though, just trying to let the stream of cars by. But that stream is never going to end, man. We're at a one third of a mile track with no full course yellows. That's impossible. You just can't... One does not simply let the stream go at this track. You're going to be out there the entire rest of the race if you believe that, but Krasi continues on. And, and because of that, there's a pretty big stack up behind him here uh, with uh, some two wide racing between Aiden Shepard and Mike Doan very close there as they went through turn one, Krasi back up to the outside. And he seems fine now, that's really odd, I don't know. Allie Nelson is now in the really heavy stuff. She's up to lapping 25th place Nick Guerra in the 98, just lapped uh, the potential points leader Prudence Littlejohn in the 31. And there are three wide, just a little bit back. That's Johnny Appleseed with a problem, actually. He's heading into the pits. But Mike Viznowski in the 41 has closed up just a little bit on Allie Nelson. There's still 50 laps to go, so Viznowski might still have a shot at this if Nelson gets caught up in lap traffic some more. And Viznowski is really efficient. So we'll have to see what happens as the laps run down here. That's Jim Mack and Mike Doan going for a position just in front of Nelson, uh, running for around 24th. That's Johnny Appleseed back on the racetrack. Whatever problem he had was minor, I guess, perhaps a flat tire or something. 10th place is now Lily Gordon, the 83. She's been uh, charging up the field throughout this race, but not quite as much as Henrietta Fitzwater. In the 61, she's posted the fastest lap of the race by quite a big margin, I think, more than at least a half a tenth of a second, which is, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for a one-third of a mile racetrack where you're constantly side-by-side, side, that's that's quite a bit, actually, as that's Luko Brovac, and I believe that's Annie Thomas in the barrier on the outside there. To get a full scale of why the Annie Thomas incident happened, you've really got to go back a couple of laps. Martinez is a lap down, Obrovac is a lap down, Annie Thomas is currently in sixth. Trying to get by Obrovac here, who's well off the pace, make some contact with him. The 22 is still up the inside, Thomas tries to squeeze down in, uh, in front of the 22, gets turned around, and goes into the, uh, into the grass on the outside there. Luca Obrovac tried to beat the 93 up the racetrack, lost that race, and as a result ended up the racetrack himself. The 93 would get stalled out uh, up at the top of the racetrack, would get a tow back to the pits, but was unable actually to get that car refired. That will be the end of the day for Annie Thomas. Really unfortunate for her. She was having a great race um, so far. As a result of the Annie Thomas incident, there was a bit of a stack up, and that stack up compounded around Ali Nelson as the laps would continue. Everyone gets on the brakes just a little bit harder because of uh, the drivers in front of them and suddenly Allie Nelson finds herself in the middle of a mess there. Jim Mack making contact with the 96, that's a 31 on the very outside overtaking two or three cars in one go. Very nice job by Little John but Nelson is not out of the thick of this mess. Mike Viznovsky really using this opportunity to catch up. This is not what Nelson wanted to see at all. I'm sure uh, Nelson now on the outside trying to overtake uh, some of the cars there, but there's just cars everywhere. There's nowhere to go for if you're Ali Nelson and trying to get through this lap traffic. You're, you're pretty much stuck. Ali Nelson beginning to get unstuck from the mess, but it's really taken a toll on the lead that she had. And here comes Mike Viznoski up the inside, trying to follow Zayden Zay Davidson through. Um, Zayden, of course, just trying to get his lap back at the moment, but Viznoski is now pretty much right there on the number 96. We've got around 30 laps to go, so he's got plenty of time to mount a charge on the 96, if he's gonna do so. Uh, John King is a long way back in third. He's got all this lap traffic to get through before he gets to these top two. It's gonna be a ton of work for anyone other than these two to battle it out uh, for the race victory here. 
Allie Nelson still holding on to the spot, trying to hold the inside as best as she can, even though she doesn't have any cars on the outside. Oh, she ran wide there. She ran awfully wide in turn number three, and here comes the 41 up the inside. They were pretty much dead even at the line. Nelson has led the last 100 laps. I'm sure it would be a nightmare for her to have this one taken away from her with just around 15 laps to go. 15 to 20 laps are left in this event. Mike Wisnowski still holding that inside. Nelson runs him down to the bottom, then swings it way out wide, trying to get uh, a good run out of the corners. Um, they've got lap traffic in front of them, so this is by all means not done, even if Wisnowski gets in front of Nelson, still side by side between those two. Zayden Davidson just has to sit and wait if he doesn't want to get a uh, penalty for doing something a bit unnecessary, I imagine. That's Santa Cruz in the 82, who has made up a bunch of positions. Uh, she got lapped a while ago, but considering she's still um, just a couple of positions behind uh, the leaders, um, with all that's been going on in this race, that's still quite impressive, really. And Mike Wisnowski finally clears the 96. No, 96. Big run into turn number three. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, to overtake back on the outside. Yes, and Wisnowski finally clear of the 96, I want to say. Nope, nope, just kidding. There's the 96 once again. Great side-by-side uh, -side battle uh, for the lead. These spectators really getting a good show in these late laps, and I, I suppose you really got to thank uh, the lap cars battling with Andy Thomas for better or for worse. And they made things uh, really hard on Ali Nelson in these final laps and as a result Mike Wisnowski was given a chance to get into the race lead she, uh, where he currently holds about a two car length lead over Nelson. Here comes Nelson with a run back on the inside though coming to 10 to go and they're side by side once again still in the middle of lap traffic still have a they still have a very little margin for error. Mike Wisnowski squeezes in just behind the 96. Might be trying to get to the inside, but no, Nelson holds the inside very well. Uh, there in turn number three, Wisnowski, a good run off the corner, but Nelson has the lead once again. Lily Gordon looking to put Gavin Moore a lap down in the 10 car. She's got a problem in the 83. It's the curse of sixth place, it appears today. Thomas uh, got crashed out from sixth, and now Lily Gordon's into the pits with just a few laps to go. Real shame uh, for uh, her. Uh, Spencer Fullerton got held up real bad, and that was, uh, that was pretty interesting for about a lap or so there with everyone stacking up behind them. Uh, Matt Duncan back up into the top six uh, after all that he's been through in this race. I'm sure uh, going back and forth between around fifth place and around 15th place, I'm sure he'll be happy to get some clean air for uh, these final few laps. Da uh, Daniel Boyles and Fullerton are side by side. I think Lily Gordon came back onto the racetrack, but she's still reporting that she has a problem. Yeah, she's back into the pits once again there. Just two laps to go this time at the line for Ali Nelson to hold off Wisnowski. Wisnowski has been struggling with lap traffic ever since Nelson got by him uh, around 10 laps ago, but uh, he's now clear and going after Nelson on this, the final lap. Uh, Nelson's driving the new Denali Tanana designed by the Discover Alaska Autosports team at the beginning of this year. Martinez drove off the road, not going to be a factor. Um, Wisnowski with one final charge into the corner has got nothing though for Nelson as she comes to the line to pick up her very first hard victory here in Geary, New Brunswick. A fairly dominant victory by Allie Nelson in fact. She led 130 of the race's laps and just like that will become the most prolific leader of the 2016 Hart Can-Am series so far. Mike Wisnowski, a very close second, given a few more laps, could have been him sitting in victory lane. He, he'll have to settle for the runner-up spot, but he will likely uh, be the points leader actually coming out of this race. A lot of the major points contenders had problems in uh, this race. Uh, John King 
finished third in the 001 car. Uh, he started, of course, on the front row and never really fell further back than around third or fourth. So very impressive run. Had nothing for those top two, though. Matthew Stringer finished fourth. He was in, in the uh, top five, or at least the top ten, for the uh, extreme majority of the day. Good on him for being consistent, getting through that lap traffic fairly efficiently. Matt Duncan finished fifth, actually. He started around the 8th position, moved up to 5th, then ended up 11th, then ended up 5th again, then ended up 11th, and finally 5th again with his interesting lines. And uh, But, but uh, overall, very solid day uh, for the Team Thunder entry. Uh, Lucas Knight finished 6th in the 8 car, really powered his way to the front in those closing laps. Spencer Fullerton finishes 7th in the 73. He was pretty much there most of the day, really. Battling on and off with uh, the other drivers up there. Uh, ben Wallah there, Irvine, bit of a surprise, finishes 8th. 11 seconds back of the leader, nearly a lap down, really, considering uh, lap times were uh, under 15 seconds at this course. Uh, Henry de Fitzwater set the fastest lap of the race and ends up 9th at uh, the end of this thing. One of the one of the uh, biggest movers of the race, up nearly 20 spots, I do believe. And Alex Wheeler rounds up the top 10 in the 69 car. I really didn't pay too much attention to him today, so can't say too much, but overall, solid job by uh, the, the DJ Harris Motorsports entry.